Welcome once again. Right now we're at 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 11 through 14. The infallible Paul. Paul writes, I have become foolish in boasting. I have become foolish in boasting. You know, once I had someone come up to me and they said, well, well, Jesus said, and they quoted Paul. Okay, they quoted something like this, like I have become foolish in boasting. Oh, wait a second. Jesus didn't say that. The Lord did not say that. God didn't say that. That's not the quote unquote, thus saith the Lord. That is not the word of God. That's the word of Paul. Paul's the one who said, I have become foolish in boasting. God didn't say that he became foolish. Jesus didn't say that he became foolish. Paul said that he became foolish. And you know, whenever you bring out any facts about Paul, I'm talking about the truth. I'm talking about just even reading what Paul actually wrote and telling people what it actually says. You know what? You get these Paulians that rise up and say, well, you're attacking Paul. Am I attacking Paul? I'm just telling you exactly what Paul wrote, what he said. I'm telling you what he said. I'm telling you the truth, the facts. This is what Paul wrote. This is not what God said. This is what Paul said. I have become foolish in boasting. You compelled me, for I ought to have been commended by you, for I am in no way inferior to the very best apostles, though I am nothing. I am no way inferior to the very best apostles. Paul here says that he is not any less than the very best apostles. But in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, he said that he is the least of all the apostles. Hmm, let's think about this for a second. In his first letter to the saints in Corinth, Paul said that he is the least of all of the apostles. And in fact, he shouldn't even be called an apostle because he persecuted the church. And now he said that he is in no way inferior to the very best of the apostles. Is Paul contradicting himself? You decide. But I want to talk about this word apostle for a minute. Now, Paul is not talking about the 12 apostles here. He is talking about apostles, which means a whole lot more than just the 12 apostles, okay? There has been many apostles throughout the ages. The word apostle actually just means to be sent, okay? If the Lord says to somebody, go and do this, and if they go, they are an apostle of the Lord. They are sent by the Lord. Anytime the Lord said anything to anybody about going and doing something, they become an apostle, okay? Now, that's not talking about the 12 disciples, the original 12 that Jesus chose in the beginning of his ministry. Jesus could have chosen Paul, but he didn't. He could have chosen many other people, but he didn't. Am I attacking Paul by saying that? Don't be so foolish. I'm just telling you the absolute facts. You can take it up with the Lord yourself. If you think that I'm attacking Paul, go to the Lord yourself and say, why didn't you choose Paul? Are you attacking Paul, Lord? Lord, the fact that you didn't choose Paul to be one of the original 12, that must mean you're attacking him. I am just stating the facts according to the scriptures. Paul goes on to say, truly the signs of an apostle were worked among you in all perseverance, in signs and wonders and mighty works. For what is there in which you were made inferior to the rest of the assemblies, or that's churches that is, unless it is that I myself was not a burden to you? Forgive me this wrong. Forgive me this wrong. Paul admits here that he was wrong. It's amazing how many Paulians rear up their ugly heads when you start telling them facts about Paul. Paul was not perfect. He certainly was not perfect in everything he did, and he wasn't perfect in his message. I believe in Book of Acts Christianity. Acts chapter 17, the men of Berea tested Paul, everything that came out of his mouth, 
everything of his, every point of his message was tested by the men of Berea. It says they ran everything that Paul said past the scriptures to make sure that Paul lined up with the scriptures. And may I submit to you that the scriptures they used was not the New Testament. Many books of the New Testament was not even written by then. And if they were, they were not even considered to be scripture until many, many years later. And they weren't even canonized as scripture until many, many years later. The scriptures that the men of Berea used to test Paul were the scriptures of the Tanakh. Am I saying that everything that Paul wrote is wrong? Absolutely not. I mean, let's not throw out the baby with the bathwater. There are many things that Paul wrote that is really, really good. Things that we can learn from, things that we can adopt and teach and teach preach as Paul did. So there's nothing wrong with taking some of what Paul said and running with it. Is everything that Paul said God's word for you today? Well, if it is, you better go find Priscilla and Aquila because it says in Paul's letters to go to Priscilla and Aquila and greet them. You better go find the house of Stephanus. If everything that Paul ever wrote was God's word for you today, there are a lot of things that Paul wrote that you are not obeying. And for those of you who know me, you know that I say this quite often, but many Christians should rename themselves as Paulians because they don't go by what Jesus said. They don't go by the words in red. They go by Paul's letters over what Jesus said. Or rather, should I say, they go by their interpretation of Paul's letters over the words in red. Until next time, seek God with all your heart, and if you do, you will find him. Call upon him, and he will show you great and mighty things. Love you guys.